with that, no, given that this was mentioned in the, uh, in the previous presentation. No, this is Lord Kelvin, and um, Kelvin was, was bo born in Belfast. Um, those of you that visited us in, 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 in that place no, uh, might have seen the statue at the, at the back of Botanic Garden. Um, I nail in front of him every, every time I pass by. <laughs> so now, um, what is the, what, is the, um, see, the, what, what will be the, the subject of this presentation? So again, um, I'm going to be, to be interested in, in irreversibility and in particular in entropy production, but in a context that is slightly different from that of the, of the previous presentation, of Stefan's presentation, because I'm mostly focusing on open systems rather than, rather than closed ones. So I'll try and illustrate uh, my, my take of the issues with the current formulations of um, irreversibility for open system dynamics. And um, I'll put forward a proposal for, say, fixing, solving some of them uh, based on an information theoretic approach to, uh, to irreversibility. And finally, we will um, touch, depending on how much I, I talk and how much I manage to irritate the chair, um, um, issues of irreversibility and the link to non-classical non -classical, non -classical features in the dynamics that we are going to, um, to address. OK, um, why entropy production? Again, um, Stefan gave a nice, nice introduction of, uh, and a and, and nice so, so an overview of why one should be interested in irreversibility when dealing with non-equilibrium non -equilibrium dynamics. Let me give you my, my, own, my own take. OK, so uh, in non-equilibrium processes, so when, you, when you're dealing with open systems, exposed to a non-equilibrium dynamics, you dissipate energy. And, and this, produces en this produces entropy. And um, you want to characterize uh, the entropy that you produce uh, because you want to characterize the open system dynamics of, of the system that you're interested in. Second, more, more pragmatically, if you're interested in technology, more than foundations, then, uh, well, uh, entropy production is a useful quantity to consider when you want to characterize the working the working performance of a given, of a given uh, machine, of a device. Um, it's enough to, to think about exergy and how exergy is reduced by, by the degree of irreversibility of the dynamics that you are considering. So now that we are, now we are entering the domain of quantum, quantum machines with the second quantum revolution that apparently uh, is, is raising, no, raising the attention of even industries and policymakers, um, then why not focusing on a useful um, indicator of, of performance um, to characterize the working, the, working, the working principles of these devices. And then really at the foundational level, and this is very close to my heart, um, I think that, say, uh, putting your hands on, on irreversibility really provides a very fertile ground for studying the quantum to classical transition. So the process that takes a quantum, quantum system and drives it towards a, a mundane classical, classical description, classical um, classical picture. Now, all that embodies, say, the motivation that probably most of us uh, put forward in, in uh, grant applications whenever, whenever they want to, to get money to, to get this, no? to, to, study, to study this framework. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is not my, no, my set of motivation, my true set of motivations, which instead comes from, from this lady. So she's Sara, uh, she's nine years old, and she's my, my daughter. And I know what you're thinking. You look at me, you look at her, you wonder how is that possible, I know. <laughs> the answer is that my, my, my wife is a beautiful lady, but um, she is a tough girl. Uh, because say, coming, from, uh, coming back from, a, from, from school, once we got, uh, we got a phone call from a very worried teacher. Uh, she was worried because she wrote the following in her homework. OK, so don't laugh, because this applies to most of you, right? So, huh? so uh, <laughs> Right, so I don't need to comment on that, right? Uh, but then she went on, no? She's a tough girl, and, and uh, so she really likes to break my heart. So <laughs> things seem to get worse with time, <laughs> which gives you the idea of irreversibility, no? I mean, uh, it's, it's precisely there. So you want, to, you want to characterize irreversibility, to understand it at a fundamental level, to cope with your kids, basically. And, and then she concluded with, I had, so it was much more fun when I first met him, which really, I mean, it's just destroying a man, basically. Okay, so um, enough with that. So uh, let me start introducing the real, say, um, the easy part of the, of the presentation, which is 
um, entropy production in open systems. Okay, so and and I don't need much much more than just basically uh, a name. No, Clausius already already introduced introduced things for me. And also, when you have a system in contact with a thermal reservoir at a given temperature T, uh, the system exchange heat with the reservoir, and um, and these exchange so the total exchange of heat that he um, no in that it undergoes at that temperature. It somehow does, doesn't compensate exactly the change in entropy of um, the state that of the system itself, that the system, of the, the state of the system experiences. So uh, Clausius was was talking of a un an uncompensated transformation. How do you compensate such imbalance? Well, you introduce a quantity which, um, hopefully, across the presentation, will be consistently called sigma, which is the so-called entropy production. So this is the guy that you have to add to the right hand side to make the balance work. Hmm? Now this relation um, is no, so is in an integral form can be recast in a, in a more um, handy version uh, by, by taking, by taking a, so a differential form. Okay? So the rate of change of the entropy of the state of the system is linked to these two quantities phi and psi where psi is the entropy production rate and uh, phi is the entropy flux rate. These are the two objects that you will, that you see you know, in this stupid cartoon explaining basically what is what is going on. No? You have a system that is open to the effect of an environment. Here, the environment is this uh, red square. Uh, the environment is at a given temperature, and um, D dynamics induces these two processes: the generation of entropy, so the entropy production process, um, which is somehow inherent, intrinsic to the dynamics itself, and then there is this flux of entropy leaving the system and entering the environment, which is embodied, quantified, and, and characterized by the entropy flux. Great. Um, at the stationary state, which is where uh, some of the experiments that are <coughs> now trying to address this, this, these issues are working, um, needless to say, there is no change in the entropy of the system. So the two quantities have to compensate each other in this manner. And as I said, these two, um, say, um, focusing on entropy production, um, is relevant, is, is interesting, because it provides uh, say, some important figures of merit for possibly the optimization of, of upcoming um, machines. No, if, you, if you change building, there is the group of Ferdinand Schmidt, Kalle, uh, no, at number seven, that they are trying to build a, a, nanoscale, a nanoscale engine. And it also explains or allows us to uh, put our hands into the role of quantum, quantum fluctuations. In, in the process of generating entropy, when the dynamics that you have, uh, you are interested in, is uh, inherently, inherently quantum. Okay, uh, problems. Neither phi nor psi are observable quantities. So if I go to Ferdinand's lab and I ask him to um, come up with an experimental strategy to actually quantify these two quantities directly, no? get, get a number, touch a number to these quantities directly, there is no way they can do that. They are not observable, they have to be you know, smarter somehow than physics, and um, identify device ways uh, to gather information about these two quantities in an indirect way, inferring them. Um, second, and, and this is, say, was already hinted by, by Stefan in his talk, there is no unifying theory for, for entropy production. No, somehow, uh, the quantifier that you have to, to uh, use, to adopt in uh, the specific problem that you're interested in depends on the context that you are addressing. It depends on the specific problem that you are, that you are focusing. I, I, I didn't say that, guys, but uh, feel free to stop me whenever you, whenever you want. Robert. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that, right? <laughs> Uh, just a stupid question, but on, on the previous transparency, the pi and the phi, I get a bit confused. Can you just show the Sure. Can I talk in terms of, uh, of the entropy change? So can I say pi is the entropy change of the universe, ds by dt is the entropy change of the system, yeah. phi is minus the entropy change of the reservoirs, is that right? Um, so I, I took the phi on the other side and I have entropy change of the universe is equal to entropy change of the system plus entropy change of the system. Right, uh, I, 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 see, pi, I, I don't think, I don't think pi is uh, related necessarily to the universe. So in this case, uh, you have already somehow traced out, traced out the environment. So this is really 
focusing on the dynamics or the reduced dynamics of the of the of the system of the system only. So in this sense, S is the entropy of the state of the system itself. And what you are doing is that you are ascribing, in a way, in a, in a say, sort of a fictitious manner, the, the uh, change of entropy in the state of the system to these two quantities. One quantity that you can indeed take as minus whatever, whatever, happens, whatever happens in the environment, right? And one quantity which is intrinsic to the non-equilibrium process it's, itself. Uh, I don't think you can, uh, you can associate it with, uh, or you should associate it with a property of the, of the universe overall. <coughs> we, we go to correlation, Hiram. We, we go to correlations in a bit. But do some, of, I mean, the, the second law is the depth ratio should be positive. So when you come to this, this rate equation, yeah. um, it's pi that has to, this be, has to be positive. Okay. Yeah. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is what you get. So we go to correlations in uh, towards the end of the of the of the of the talk. Um, right. So no unifying theory. Um, but several attempts at, uh, say, providing, providing a, a generalizing context, okay, a unifying context. And this date back to, to quite a few, uh, say, a few um, years ago, so from Monsager to Schnackenberger, I apologize for the German speaking, I cannot pronounce this name at all, and probably he would not have been able to pronounce mine, but that's okay. Uh, Galavotti and Cohen, and then very, say, more recently, uh, from Tasaki, Trasaki Crooks and Yazinski, all the way to uh, say, um, uh, formulations for the uh, quantification, so for figures of mate able to characterize entropy production in closed system dynamics, uh, put forward by, by Daphne and Lutz, by Breuer. And, and, and this is a, say, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting context, it's an interesting proposal because um, it allows me to go, to, go, to go forward with what I want to show you. And it, this, this quantity here, this proposal for um, entropy production, um, is say very very well motivated. No? So they say, uh, let me start from. So let me consider a non-equilibrium process. They had in mind a closed um, closed system, and then they expanded, they extended it to the open system dynamics. Let me uh, um, uh, realize an open dynamics which will take my system to a final state at a time tau. Well, given that the, my my dynamics is not an equilibrium dynamics, right? So um, there is no reason why such a final state. Um, is an equilibrium state at the end, not of the final Hamiltonian of my, of, my, of my system. So they link this entity production to the distance between these two states in state space. Okay, so you can quantify uh, this distance through um, something called relative entropy. Such a relative entropy quantifies um, and provides a quantification, a, char a characterization of the process of generation of, of irreversible, irreversible entropy. Okay, um, let's elaborate on that a little bit more. And in particular, I'm going to, to focus on a, some sort of paradigm. Okay, so Limbla dynamics, so I have my system prepared, no, um, rho is the density matrix of my system, it evolves according to an Hamiltonian age, and there is a dissipative process, or anyway, an open process, ongoing, and, um, and, and this is the master equation that describes, that describes the motion, the evolution of my, of my system. If I stick to the a definition of entropy production, let me call it a la Defner and Lutz. I mean, um, this is probably uh, uh, inappropriate as a way of referring to that, but let's, let's, uh, let, let's agree on this. Um, say, uh, pi is minus the derivative in time of the von Neumann relative entropy, okay? Uh, <coughs> between, between what? As I said, between the final state of my dynamics and this hypothetical state, equilibrium state, that I will get if my dynamics was entirely adiabatic, entirely uh, quasi-static, yeah? fully, fully, fully at equilibrium at every, at every time. Okay? So this quantity seems a natural, natural quantity to consider in light of the previous slide, of, of the previous, previous, um, yes, the previous slide and the previous information that we, we went through. And it has some nice features. For instance, if your bath is a thermal bath, uh, then you can elaborate this expression explicitly, and phi, the entropy production, uh, sorry, the entropy flux rate, takes the form of something like the energy that leaks into the environment at the temperature T. And this will make Clausius very happy because it's exactly the framework that he had in mind, so pretty much adherent with, the, with what um, classical, um, classical thermodynamics would, 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 would give us. Problem, 
problem is that if I stick to this definition of entropy production, um, and if I try and go to the limit of zero temperature, very small temperatures, which is, a, I mean, it's a limit that is accessible experimentally uh, right now. Well, these two quantities, phi and pi, might diverge. Might diverge in light of the pathology uh, uh, brought forward by the for Neumann relative entropy, so when you take one of these two states as a pure state, which is what you get at t equal to zero, then this quantity can diver diverges. So, is this divergence a real problem, or is it just a say an artifact? Somehow, of the manner I'm splitting, of the way I'm splitting the rate of change of entropy, no, into a, a flux and an entropy production, entropy production rate. Uh, the question is still open. But yet, I mean, these, nevertheless, uh, these divergence pinpoints a problem, right? A problem in the current formulation, in this at least formulation of entropy production. There have been quite a several, quite, quite a few attempts at fixing this problem by uh, re recasting the way we uh, quantify entropy production. And among them, um, the one that I like, I like a lot is the one by, by Esposito. So Massimiliano Esposito in, in Luxembourg. So what they, what they and, and co-workers, what they, what they did was uh, proposing a, a reformulation of entropy production um, in this way. So they put the environment back into, into the picture, stating um, I shouldn't calculate the relative entropy between the state of my system and the equi hypothetical equilibrium at, at, at time t and the hypothetical equilibrium state of the system. No, that I will get through an adiabatic, through, through an quasi-static transformation. No, I should compare what happens to both the system and the environment. So in a sense, they go towards your, your point, uh, your point before, Robert. Um, so what they add here is, yeah, the relative entropy between the overall state of both system and the environment the system is interacting with, and they compare that with the factorized state composed of the reduced state of the system and a collection of equilibrium states for the various components of your environment. Think of a, no, of a spin boson model, right? So many harmonic oscillators. These are all thermal equilibrium states, say, thermal states for, for the various oscillators in a tank. Uh, and then they apply that, um, yeah, this quantity, given that these are relative entropy is always positive, it's nice. It has a nice physical interpretation, again, hinting at something that you, 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 you pointed out uh, before, Ram. Uh, no, it points at, uh, at, at the fact that you have uh, you generate entropy in light of two, two features. The first is that your state row might embody, what might encompass correlations between system and environment. And so, so this tensor product, this factorization between system and environment might break down. And second, uh, maybe the state of my environment is not an equilibrium state at all, right? So, and these are, for those of you that are interested in open system dynamics, these are two very, very interesting, very, say, key features of open system dynamics because they are responsible for the emergence of non Markovianity in a given dynamics. So nice physical interpretation. Um, they applied it to the quantum Brownian motion, finding that, uh, well, uh, given that I'm putting back the environment into my picture, I have to pay a price. And this price is that uh, basically there is no monotonicity in the entropy production. So this quantity has revivals. No, goes up and down simply because I'm putting back, I'm enforcing a unitary picture in a dynamics that is not um, unitary at all. If I manage, uh, my last slide will go back to these conclusions, uh, reinterpreting them in a different in a different manner. Okay, so problems. Now I have highlighted the, the issues, at least some of the issues with the current formulation of entropy production at this stage. How can we end attempts at fixing? So um, what am I putting forward? Right. So um, a new proposal, say, we tried together working with, with these guys, uh, Jader Santos and, and Gabriel Landi at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, we tried to um, come up with at least an example of a quantity that might, uh, that encompasses all the nice features of a proper um, entropy production, but that uh, solves some of the issues that I have, I have highlighted before. And the key step is the replacement of the quantifier, no, of the uh, information theoretic quantifier of irreversibility that, that, that um, we have to use. Rather than using the von Neumann relative entropy, we propose to use the entropy based on the Wigner function of your system. Okay, so just to fix the ideas, 
let's consider just harmonic systems. And in order to be uh, consistent with uh, what I I'm going to, to, to illustrate later on, let's focus simply on Gaussian, Gaussian processes and Gaussian states. So processes that keep, uh, let me finish and then I'll go to your complaint. Um, <laughs> I think I know what is the complaint, yeah. Um, so f let me focus on Gaussian processes, um, so processes that conserve the Gaussian nature of a, a possible Gaussian initial state, um, where this quantity, no, which is the entropy, um, entropy defined through the Wigner function, is a positive quantity in a well-defined one. Please. Which was exactly my question, right? It's that yeah. the Wigner function is negative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. only way to make it positive is yeah. to consider Gaussian processes. Yeah. But if I consider Gaussian processes, this thing is exactly the same quantity as the von Neumann entropy. It's not. It's not the same quantity as the von Neumann entropy. Uh, you can show it. You can show it analytically. I, I have. I have. A okay. Because all other Rini entropies are identical. Can I? Can I? If I? If I can. Uh, the way you you go to non-Gaussian states, actually, I mean, we 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 thought about this, uh, is to um, again generalize this stuff and going from the Wigner entropy to the Ver to the Verl entropy. Uh, so using rather than uh, um, it's a, it's a it's an important change because you are using Yosemite function rather than Yosemite function instead of instead of the Wigner function, you fix some of the pathologies that you would have through um, uh, so based on the Wigner. And, 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 and the associated entropy. The two quantities are not, so the, the von Neumann entropy and the, and the Wigner entropy are not, uh, strictly speaking, the same. Um, they are related. There is a scaling factor. Yeah, there's just two pi over h bar. Ah, no, 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 no. There is a, um, OK, so you want me to skip some of the, th of the thing? That's, that's, that's it. So they look the same yeah. at high temperature. But if you look at low temperature, they are not at all the same thing. Uh, in particular, why the von Neumann entropy no? goes to zero, and this, this is the reason for the, for the uh, divergence that you find uh, when t goes to zero. The, this quantity here, which is, I, I skipped a couple of, couple of steps, but this quantity is related to the Rennie 2 entropy. Uh, and the Rennie 2 entropy has some nice, nice features that I like when, when dealing with this quantity. So for instance, can be related to a free energy difference and satisfies a strong subadditivity Inequality, uh, which are nice features when you're interested when you're interested in this in these problems from an information theoretical uh, viewpoint. For thermal state, they look pretty much the same, but with the nice feature that it doesn't diver diverge at zero temperature. It's positive, it grows, and um, and see mimics what you expect from a thermal state at large at large temperature. But they are strictly not the same thing. Please. What system are you plotting this? It's an harmonic oscillator in contact with a thermal, with a thermal, okay, with so a thermal. Okay, so just e to the minus beta yep. h. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is the guy that we want to focus on. And uh, let me focus on why it makes, it makes sense. You can quantify through, uh, not through this proposal, you can put your hands on the entropy production rate and the entropy flux rate, finding some very nice, nice features. Uh, one of them is, for instance, that the flux rate is immediately linked to something that you can go and measure in the lab, the mean number of, of, of excitations in the state of the harmonic oscillator that you have at hand. Here, n bar is the mean occupation number of the environment. So this is for an harmonic oscillator in contact with a thermal, with a thermal bath. So it comes up, so basically this is a quantity that is more directly observable than the von Neumann-based one. Um, say, a la, a la Defner and Lutz, it's enough for you to go and measure the energy of this quantity, and you know you can reverse engineer um, the, uh, the quantification of, of, your, of your entropy, uh, entropy flux. At large temperature, it goes back exactly to Clausius. So that's, that's, again, a very nice feature of this formulation. So you are somehow consistent with what you would expect from a good entropy production. But there is no divergence at zero temperature. And this is not a very, uh, say, a minor, a, minor, a minor feature of this, uh, of, of this proposal. I'm a quantum optician by training. So um, you give me a problem, I try to apply it to a quantum, quantum optics problem. Take a cavity, right? So the field inside a cavity, a leaky cavity, in contact with a bath that is not necessarily uh, um, an equilibrium bath, so a thermal bath. So, so you can apply this formalism to non-equilibrium environment as well, as well. And in particular, we, we looked at what happens when your bath is squeezed. And, and what you find is that, again, the link between the mean energy of the field inside the cavity, in this case, and the entropy flux rate is kept. Um, um, but there are nice considerations. No? You can work out the entropy production rate. And you have um, 
the, the, the cavity is also, sorry, the cavity is also pumped from outside by a field that has an amplitude E. So uh, what you find is that there are two contributions to this entropy production. One is strictly related to the fact that you have a driven system, natural, but one is independent of, of um, the, driving, the driving force and is linked directly to the degree of squeezing, so to the fact that your bath is not an equilibrium bath at all. So um, this for formalism, this framework, allows you to pinpoint the various contribution, to identify the various contribution to the, to, the entropy, to the entropy production. Yeah, five minutes are enough, because what I want to do now is to dig a little bit more on uh, the observability of these features, of, of this quantity, right? And what I'm going to do is, is this. You know, so far, I focus mostly on this scenario. So this is a complexity, no, irreversibility versus complexity plot, right? So I'm going to be extremely loose in terms of what, you, what I mean by complexity and how you quantify irreversibility, right? So you pick up the quantities that you want, size, the number of particles, the mass, of the particles or of the system themselves as the identifier, as quantifier of complexity. But the, the uh, realm where I'm moved so far is basically this one. A single harmonic oscillator, for instance, open to the effect of an environment. So a very low degree of complexity. And the system has been put explicitly out of equilibrium to quantify reversibility. Uh, you can go in the opposite direction, which is basically a little bit what Stefan was looking at. No? So many body systems possibly isolated, so you scale up in the degree of complexity, right? Um, the, no, the holy grail is somewhere here, where you want many bodies, and so multiple parties interacting with each other and in contact with, a res with reservoir possibly correlated. We are nowhere close to this to be able to describe this situation. So what I'm going to do is the next, say, a uh, reasonable step. Two harmonic oscillators open to independent, independent reservoirs. Weak coupling, and let's see what happens when I apply this formalism, okay? So I have two harmonic oscillators in contact, each in contact with its own reservoir. They are coupled very weakly to each other. And let's see what is the result of, the, of, um, of my formalism for entropy production. For a single oscillator in contact with its own thermal bath, I have already shown you everything. The entropy production at the steady state is related to the mean energy of the system. When I have two coupled ones, well, what I get is that the entropy production rate at the steady state can again be related, can again be related to the mean energy of the two particles in contact with the respective reservoir. And the effect of the, of the coupling, the effect of the interaction, is all encompassed by the state upon which you calculate this, this average. So the, the effect of the coupling is all in these, in these averages. So even in the case of coupled systems, no, you have, you have something that can be, can be assessed, can be, can be experimentally addressed. And this was indeed addressed by, by a couple of experiments, actually. Um, back in 2016, we, uh, we were curious enough to see how this formalism could have been applied to uh, state-of-the-art experiments in two, say, uh, say, two platforms dealing with meso mesoscopic systems. Cavity atomic mechanics on one end, and intra-cavity atomic systems on the other. So the experiments were run with um, um, in collaboration with the group of Markus Aspelmeyer in Vienna and the group of Tilman Esslinger in Zurich. And um, although the systems, and I'm not going to, to go into the details of the, two, uh, of the two platforms, I'm more than happy to discuss them with you if you are interested later on, but uh, the, although the, the diagrams and the physics look extremely different from, no, in, the two dis in the two different scenarios, there are regimes where the two platforms actually can be described by very similar equations of motion. And these are or Hamiltonians, right? So these are the, uh, this is the Hamiltonian of two coupled harmonic oscillators, um, a quadratic coupling, each oscillator in contact with its own bath, and the two baths are different temperatures in principle. And the entropy production that we, uh, not that I've illustrated bef not before, that I've introduced before, um, and that we propose as a nice quantifier for irreversibility, turns out to be an extremely sensitive quantity to um, no, to the features of the dynamics, for instance, of a diluted BEC within, within an optical cavity. By, basically, by tracing in time what happens to the light leaking out of the cavity, no, you pump the cavity with this pump, and there is, uh, there is an, uh, say, a, a second pump coming from, basically, from, from no, a, the, an axis orthogonal to the plane of the, of the screen, you can induce a dynamics of the, uh, of the collective motion of the atoms, the center of mass motion of the atoms, that looks like that of an harmonic oscillator. 
you couple it to the light within the cavity, you track what happens to the noise, uh, to the no density noise spectrum of the light leaking out of the cavity, and you get a behavior like this. So from that, from the energy of the, of the light leaking out of the cavity, you can reconstruct what is the entropy production rate, um, um, what is the entropy production within the cavity itself, of the, no, no, uh, given by the interaction process between light and the, and the cold atoms. And you see, uh, you, see you get a, a plot that looks precisely what these guys in ETH were getting when studying um, the critical properties of this system. So it turns out that this system mimics what is called a Dickey model. Right? So, and the Dickey model undergoes a phase transition when the coupling between the light and the atoms so the, well, uh, reaches a value, a critical, a critical value, which is this GAB critical. Right? So you have a divergence in observable quantities of my system. This divergence is captured perfectly. I'm, fin I'm done. It's captured perfectly by, by the irreversible entropy um, quantified through the von Neumann. The von, uh, sorry, through the uh, through the uh, the Reni to or the Wigner approach. Okay, with that I I am done. Um, this is the group in Belfast. Um, Bina works in in the group, so he's here in the audience, and the others are there suffering my tantrums. Um, shameful advert: we have a position for a postdoc starting sometime next year. So if you if if you know anyone that might enjoy a bit of bad weather, but this doesn't seem to be too good either. And good beer, uh, just just uh, point them in my direction. These are the guys that put the bread on our table. I thank you for your patience and, and yours in particular.